Let's do another example involving implicit differentiation. Um, this time I didn't try to draw the curve that's defined by this equation. It's a pretty wild looking curve. Um, you can find a computer generated sketch in the textbook if you want to see what this thing looks like. Um, but our main goal here is to make sure we, we have a good handle on the mechanics for computing derivatives using implicit differentiation. So let's see how this one goes. Uh, now, we have to be very careful here because this term involves first a composition, right? We have this product inside the sine function, but then also we have the product and a function of y to boot. Um, so when we're taking the derivative, right, we've got to do the derivative Let's just look at this first term. The rest of them are pretty easy. So once we've figured out this first term, we can put it all together. So the derivative for sine of x squared times y squared. First, we do the derivative of the outside function, right? So it's cosine. We always evaluate at the inside function. Right? And then we multiply. by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so for that derivative, we need product rule. Derivative of x squared is 2x. We multiply by y squared. Then we have x squared times the derivative of y squared, which is 2y, but don't forget, anytime we take a derivative of something involving y, we got to multiply by y prime. Okay, so there's our derivative, right? We've we've we worked it all out. We've got that derivative. Um, now we're ready to put that in and and do the whole thing. So the other thing we probably want to do is let's clear brackets, right? Because we want to solve for y prime, and right now this y prime is is trapped inside these parentheses, which are being multiplied by this cosine term. So let's clear brackets. That's gonna set us up to solve. So we have first 2xy squared multiplied by cosine of x squared y squared. Then 2x squared y times cos x squared y squared. And that term is multiplied by y prime. All right. Now let's deal with the remaining terms in the equation. On the left-hand side, there's still a y cubed. We've seen that one before. We know how to deal with it. Power rule gives us a 3y squared. Chain rule gives us a y prime. On the right-hand side, the derivative of x is, is 1. And derivative of y seems innocent enough, seems simple enough, but somehow this one, it messes people up. The, the derivative of y is y prime, right? So there's suddenly, there's no function there, right? y is just by itself, and, and, and you've been dealing with all these functions of y, and you're like, what do I do when it's just y? Y by itself. Um, well, the derivative of y is y prime, right? That's what y prime means, it's the derivative of y. Uh, I'll, I'll see a lot of students who will write y times y prime here, or, or any number of different things, but in fact, all you really want there is a y prime. Very good. Now we gotta collect up terms, right? Everything with a y prime on the left. What do we got? y prime times 2x squared y times cosine x squared y squared. That's 1 down. Plus 3y squared. That's another 1 down. Bring that over to the other side. Minus, ah, again. What do we do, right? Y prime by itself. Y prime by itself, one times Y prime. If you want to think about it that way, right? The derivative of Y is one, but we multiply by Y prime. So minus one, all times Y prime. What's left over? We got that one on the right. There's one other term here that doesn't have a Y prime. It's that first one. So we bring that over. Minus two X Y squared cosine X squared times Y squared. And now we can solve for y prime. 1 minus 2xy squared cos x squared y squared over 
2xy squared cos x squared y squared plus 3y squared minus 1. And there you have it. Is that result useful? I don't know. Is that an equation you're likely to be working with? Probably not. Were you able to come up with a point that actually lies on the curve? Doubtful. Um, zero, zero. That works, right? We could put that in, see what we get. What do we get? One over minus one, minus one. Okay, so there's one point where I guess we could do the tangent line if we were, if we were so inclined, right? Finding other points that fit on that curve, maybe a challenge. So is this something that's going to come up in everyday practice? Probably not. Um, does it give us some confidence that we can do implicit differentiation for fairly complicated scenarios? I think so. If you can make it through this problem, you're probably going to be able to handle any sort of actual implicit differentiation scenarios that come at you um, in practice.